Now we have even more evidence showing that resistance training is probably the most important thing you can do to improve your body composition. And we know body composition is related to metabolic health. So maybe resistance training is the key to really improving metabolic health. But when combined with other healthy lifestyle, it's probably even more effective. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And, you know, exercise has really taken a, a sort of circular approach where first it was all about cardio, then it was all about interval training, and now it seems to be all about resistance training. And each, each type of exercise clearly plays a role and has an effect. But it, emerging evidence really is showing that resistance training might be the most important if you had to pick just one. So the new study published in Obesity Reviews is called Resistance Training Effectiveness on Body Composition and Body Weight Outcomes in Individuals with Overweight and Obesity Across the Lifespan, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Big, long title. But basically what they did was they took 114 randomized controlled trials that had some form of resistance training, either alone or with aerobic exercise or with caloric restriction. And they, they compiled all the data to see what are the changes in body fat, with visceral fat, lean mass, um, and overall body weight. Now, overall body weight and BMI, when we have body composition analysis, BMI and body weight is kind of worthless, I think, in my opinion, because you don't know if you're losing lean mass or fat mass if all you're looking at is body weight reduction. But when you have the body composition data, so much better because then you know exactly what type of weight you're losing. And as we talk about a lot here at Diet Doctor, healthy weight loss means losing mostly fat mass. Usually when you lose weight, you're going to lose some lean mass, but mostly fat mass and try and maintain or build your lean mass if at all possible. So they had some interesting findings. First though, this was in people who are overweight and obese. So this is not the bodybuilder group. This is not the healthy biohacker group, right? This is the people who are who are overweight and obese, uh, which is a very important group that we want to help improve by losing fat mass. The average BMI was 30. The average body fat was around 36, 36%. Now, the average, or 50% of the studies here were resistance training alone, and 44% were resistance training plus aerobic exercise. So what that shows is there are very few actually had dietary interventions, which is interesting in itself. But there was a subset that had resistance training and caloric restriction, as well as resistance training, aerobic training, and caloric restriction. But those were much fewer studies than just the resistance training alone or resistance training plus aerobic training. And what they found was, to, to cut to the chase, resistance training and calorie reduction was the most effective for reducing overall body fat at 3.8%. And even resistance training alone had a 1.6% reduction in body fat. So no aerobic training, no caloric restriction, just resistance training reduced body fat by 1.6%. And I should mention the average or the mean um, length of these studies was 14 weeks. So, you know, not years and years, but also not just a couple of days or a couple of weeks. 14 weeks is pretty good duration. So that was body fat mass. Now, what about lean mass? Well, resistance training alone was actually the best for lean mass, increasing it by 0.8 kilograms, whereas resistance training and aerobic training was second, increasing it by 0.6 kilograms, so pretty close. So resistance training is clearly the key, but they didn't talk about how much protein they were eating. So that's really interesting because as we know, protein is so important for maintaining and building lean mass. So you wonder if they had a you know higher protein, lower protein group, uh, uh, you would suspect even better lean mass gains for the higher protein group. But interestingly, resistance training and calorie restriction did not build lean mass. I'll say that again. Resistance training and calorie restriction alone did not build lean mass, but was able to maintain it. So that is a potential victory, right? If you're losing body fat and maintaining lean mass, that's okay. So that's resistance training and calorie restriction. Now, Again, hypothesizing here, resistance training with some calorie restriction potentially, but eating better, higher protein, higher satiety could potentially have decreased body fat, increased lean mass, but that's a hypothesis that wasn't tested in this study, but other studies have shown that to be the case. Also important, they measured visceral um, adipose tissue, so the, the sort of internal fat tissue that's most correlated with metabolic dysfunction and poor health outcomes, and that was reduced kind of across the board with any of the resistance training intervention. So that's really important as well, especially as we talk about healthy weight loss, not just weight loss. Then a couple more points to make. This was interesting. The resistance training and calorie restriction had very similar results to the resistance training, 
aerobic exercise and calorie restriction. Suggesting that if you're doing resistance training and calorie restriction, that aerobic exercise doesn't add much from a body composition standpoint. And I want to reinforce that from a body composition standpoint. We have other data suggesting that just physical activity and cardiorespiratory fitness is also correlated with improved health and improved outcomes. And that's where that aerobic training can come in. So it's important when we say what works, what doesn't, what's good, what's bad, you know, however we want to black and white or, you know, put things in buckets, we have to talk about what our outcomes are. So if we're just talking about body composition, then resistance training with calorie restriction is just as good as adding aerobic training. But if you're talking about cardiorespiratory fitness, then all of a sudden that aerobic training probably has an impact, right? So we got to be clear about our, our definitions. And then the last point was a lot of these findings were sort of regardless of age or sex. So of course they had males and females in here and they had adolescents, um, young adults and older adults. And they found most of these results were across the board, which is pretty good, right? It means it's never too early to start with resistance training to help with body composition and healthy weight loss. And it's never too late. Those are two very important points. So conclusion, resistance training is good for body composition, right? It's probably the most important thing. Also though, my two cents is adding protein, so important. We have a whole podcast um, with Dr. Stuart Phillips from McMaster University, which I highly recommend you listen to. We talk a lot about the details of some of these, and we've had lots of ones uh, about protein, of course, as well. Um, that you can find on our website. But hopefully this was helpful to give you the, um, the uh, just the importance of resistance training. Oh, and one more thing. What is resistance training? Probably should have started with that. But that does, of course, in you in a meta-analysis, every study is going to have a slightly different protocol. But remember, these were people who are overweight and obese at a range of ages. So this wasn't your gym guys going to the gym and pumping heavy and iron. It was some form of resistance training. That could be body weight exercises, could be band exercises. Basically it means stressing your muscles, preferably stressing them to fatigue in a safe way, but it doesn't mean pumping big weights in the gym, right? That's not the barrier. Cause a lot of people think like, yeah, I'm never going to do that. Um, I'm never going to go to the gym and lift heavy weights. So resistance training isn't for me. No, totally not the case. Just get medicine ball, some bands, um, body weight exercises, you can do resistance training. We have a whole um, exercise program for beginners, the Let's Get Moving course uh, at dietdoctor.com that you can check out, which is really designed for beginners to get you started on an exercise program, including resistance training in a safe and healthy um, and achievable way. So anyway, hope that was helpful. Get out there, move your body, stretch your muscles. It's good for you. All right, take care, everybody. We'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.